So we are 20 games into the season. We have a 6-14 record. Carl Anthony Towns is averaging 24 a game. Wiggins is averaging one more point per game on slightly better efficiency than he was last time we checked the stats. So 20 games into the year, these changes seem to be working for him, and Culver is unfortunately still struggling to shoot the ball. Josh Okogie has vastly improved his shooting. He was shooting 20-something percent from three in the first 10 games, up to 37% now, which is fantastic. Overall, we are not winning, but this roster is where I want it to be right now. Andrew Wiggins is being exactly the player I want him to be. My role players are playing their roles well, and Cat is being Cat. So with that said, let's get into a game versus the Memphis Grizzlies. So we are playing a game against the Memphis Grizzlies who, in my opinion, have got to be the most underrated team in the NBA. I actually wouldn't be surprised if they won like 35 games and if they were in the East I could actually see them being a playoff team. Off of the start, Carl Anthony Towns gets the wide open pick and pop. Uh, this team has a lot of potential on the defensive end with Brandon Clark, Jaron Jackson Jr., and Dylan Brooks. The pick and roll that you just saw between Morant and Jaron Jackson Jr., that combo is going to be unstoppable as it also works as a pick and pop because Jaron is a knockdown shooter as a big man. This team is highly underrated. Wiggins down to Marvin Williams who gets his first field goal as a Minnesota Timberwolves. He hit some free throws before that. He actually got like eight free throws in this game which was really weird because that is not something you expect from him. Andrew Wiggins going inside gets it down to Robert Covington but gets it tipped. Josh Okogie hits the wide open three pointer. Good assist by Wiggins. And then Morant trying to get open here gets the ball knocked away to Jeff Teague, who gets it up to Jarrett Culver, and then getting past Igudala down to Rocco for the layup. Well ran fast break for us there. A wannabe Andre Igudala, Josh Jackson steals it and gives it to real Andre Igudala, and he hits the corner three pointer. Uh, so, so far, a pretty competitive match, and then Jeff Teague trying to get inside loses the ball, but Carl Anthony Towns corrals it, and then Culver gets Williams to do the pick and fade and steps into a wide open three pointer. He's been shooting way too many threes this year, but I'm happy to take that one. The dude was literally taking like six a game. And this play right here is exactly why Carl Anthony Towns has all of the confidence in the world for me to be our superstar player. The man is just an offensive beast. Gets the rebound right here and throws it down emphatically. Carl Anthony Towns, I definitely have no hesitance in him. Jay Crowder pulling up from three. This team seriously could be pretty damn all right. As long as Morant has a pretty solid rookie season, they're not going to be at the bottom of the league. That's for damn sure. Marvin Williams gets a layup from the pass from Culver. End of the first quarter. Morant hits a catch and shoot mid-range shot out of the inbound. 2K actually kind of fucked up the Grizzlies in their game though because Brandon Clark was a small forward and he was a 73 overall. Uh, nice dunk there by Wiggins getting past Morant. But Brandon Clark is one, a power forward, and two, he damn well be better ranked higher than a 73, or at least he should be. Carl Anthony Towns getting blocked by Jaron Jackson after the Morant pull up mid range, and then I just step to the side on. Clark who hits the or gets the dunk right there. Robert Covington and missing the three-pointer and then on the fast break. Morant to my favorite player in the NBA, Dylan Brooks, hitting the two-pointer. And then Carl Anthony Towns here hitting the long two-pointer of his own. Wish it was a three-pointer, but it does go in. On this play here, Jaron Jackson Jr. out of the corner getting the wide open three pointer and he ties it up with a couple seconds left in the half. And then right here, Carl Anthony Towns answers with a corner three of his own, giving us the three point lead. Oh, it was actually a long two, whatever. But then Morant hits a long two of his own and he ties it up for the half. And then now, starting this, I get it down to Cat. Not the greatest pass in the world, but he finishes it. And then Wiggins pulling it out to the corner. Get it down to Covington, who hits the green release three-pointer. Perfect timing on that. And then Valanchunas missing this, or sorry, getting this layup right here. I confuse it with a different play that happens in a second here. But 
Carl Anthony Towns, wide open mid-range pick and pop. Those are really easy to get for him. A little too easy because the pick and rolls, as I said in the past, were messed up in this game. Marvin Williams posting up on Morant. Not exactly what I traded for him for, but I'll happily take the easy bucket. This is the bucket miss I was talking about right here where Valanchunas misses the short little fadeaway. And then Jeff Teague on the fast break dumps it off to Noah Vonley, who hits that left-handed layup over... Uh, Crowder, even Rab tries to do his best Kobe impression with Valanchunas getting the putback, and then Grayson Allen hitting this pull-up mid-range shot to end the third quarter. I kind of skipped most of the third quarter because a lot of it was boring or it was just free throws. And then right here, Marvin Williams to complete the third quarter for us, hits that tough layup in traffic, and that will be the third going into the fourth now. Uh, even Rav doing a Kobe impression once again, but this time he is actually successful. A lot of nice footwork on that one, getting Noah Vonley to jump. And then inside, Culver crosses Dylan Brooks, hits the left-handed layup. Uh, Jaron Jackson Jr. gets swatted by Jordan Bell, pretty much the only contribution he's ever done for me. But off of the inbound, John Morant gets here, and then for whatever reason, no one picks him up and Jake Lehman steps off, so he gets the long two-pointer to go. Just getting the starters in the game now, Andrew Wiggins on Morant. Gets the step inside, hits the short little jump shot over him. Morant is just too small. Brandon Clark going inside, finishes over the shorter Josh Akogi. Close game now with three minutes left. Marvin Williams hits the only jump shot that he hits of the game. There's an annoying tendency in this game for big men who can't shoot to spot up and big men who can to not spot up. So that's another issue with this game. But Carl Anthony Towns with the easy post up on John Morant. John Morant with the easy dunk inside. So not a lot of defense being played either way here. And then Brandon Clark missing that reverse layup because he went the wrong way. And Carl Anthony Towns was able to contest it. And my boy Robert Covington out of the corner with the clutch three-pointer giving us the two-point lead. Morant trying to get inside here. Gets swatted by Carl Anthony Towns. Gets it to Wiggins. And then on this play, Robert Covington not able to hit the nail in the coffin three-pointer, unfortunately. But Dylan Brooks misses this floater here. And Towns grabs the rebound. And then trying to put the nail in the coffin here. Wiggins getting the pick and fade from Marvin Williams goes inside I should not have shot that and unfortunately Wiggins touches it on the way out So the Memphis Grizzlies now have a chance to tie up the game But Grayson Allen misses a crucial three-pointer and that concludes the game Carl Anthony Towns with 20 and 15 Marvin Williams with 16 points shot six free throws Andrew Wiggins with 12 7 and 8 didn't shoot all that well from the field, but that was fine and Robert Covington also hit two big threes. I don't like Jeff Teague. He is awkward to score with in games for me, even though he is good in simulation, and even if I didn't dislike playing with him, I think I can get some value out of him. While he is overpaid, he is only on a one-year deal, so he won't hurt any team's salary long-term, and he is a good six-man for a playoff team. So if we traded him, we could potentially get a late first-round pick from a good team, taking back another bad contract as long as that contract is a one-year deal, so it doesn't mess with our master plan. And there are two Two teams that fit into that category. The Miami Heat are amidst the playoff race in the Eastern Conference. Their current backup point guard is Kendrick Nunn, who is a 69 overall. So I think that they could use an upgrade in that department, and in doing so, we would take back Myers Leonard, who is their third string center, who is on a one-year $11 million deal, as well as Nikola Miritich, who is on a one-year $5 million deal, and get their first round pick with a top 10 protection and give them Nas Reed. For whatever reason, 2K won't let me put a protection on the pick but let's just say that if the Heat pick lands in the top 10, I'll give it back to them. Another team is the Mavericks. They have made it clear that they are trying to win with Luka sooner rather than later, and as of now, they have an 11-10 and 10 record, tied for the 8th seed. But they could easily fall out of the playoffs in the tough West, so I think they might be hesitant to trade for Teague. The move would be Teague for Courtney Lee, who has not been playing much, and a lottery protected first. Again, 2K won't let me put a protection on the pick, but we'll just say if the Mavs fall out of the playoffs, we will give them their pick back. Now, as much as I would like to land the number 15 pick from Dallas, because of the high chance that they fall out of the playoffs, I'm not sure if it's worth the risk. And no, I'm not going to do that trade without the lottery protection. I don't 
think the Mavericks would do the deal in real life without it. With the Heat, I am confident they make the playoffs, so I'm certain I get a first round pick out of it, but it's likely to be in the 20s, whereas with the Mavericks, I get a chance at a pick just outside of the lottery. Let me know what trades you think I should make in the comments below, and as for who will replace Teague, I want to be the team that gives Jeremy Lin a shot. I think he is a better playmaker, and he can be a comparable scorer. So next episode, we will come to a conclusion on the trade and sign Jeremy Lin.